Good afternoon, uh, everyone who is uh, on the system. I believe there are still some people to come, but uh, it is just a few minutes past three, so let's start. Welcome to this webinar as organized by Service Logistics Forum, or in short, SLF. Uh, my name is Ben Grave, and until a few months ago, I was the chairman of the board. Um, this is already SLF webinar number 10 this year. And one main activity is yet to come, our Service Logistics Summit, November 23. This webinar is recorded, so other SLF participants can watch this at the later stage. Uh, please address your questions in the chat box. I will keep an eye on your questions and I will address these at the end of each pitch or at the end of uh, the total uh, webinar at the final Q&A. Please switch off your mic and camera uh, unless you are asked by me to, uh, to put it on for entering the Q&A. Let's now uh, talk about the program of this webinar. As SLF focus on the exchange of knowledge and know-how and we stimulate innovation and talent. Talking about talent, you Budemakers has won the 2020 SLF thesis award and in this webinar, we offer you more insight than just his one minute piece during the last year's summit. The jury was impressed, especially by, uh, by uh, let me quote here, uh, the high practical relevance of the work and therefore its potential impact in the field by the general applicability of the method, as well as the quality of the work based on a thorough and solid use of existing models and techniques. Uh, that is pretty impressive, as said by the jury. After his graduation at the Technical University Eindhoven, Joop has joined uh, KSA Process Technology as a simulation engineer. His master thesis was the result of his internship at Lely, reason why we have asked Oscar Moon's senior project manager at Lely um, to address in this webinar the practical relevance of his study as part of the maintenance innovation in at Lely. At the university, you were supervised by uh, assistant professor Claudia Ficarotti. She will address this smart maintenance solution in an academic perspective. So this is the program. Let you, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ben. Thank you uh, for having me. I will share my screen. I believe uh, you can all see my screen right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, again, man, for having me on this uh, on this webinar uh, about my uh, master thesis that I conducted last year. Uh, a small introduction about myself uh, for uh, those who don't know me. Uh, so my name is Joop Hoedemakers and currently I'm working as a simulation engineer at KZ Process Technology. Uh, here I uh, create uh, simulation models, mainly uh, during the, the sales stage to uh, validate uh, production concepts, and production layouts, and to identify uh, bottlenecks uh, at an early stage and to give some, uh, 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 to predict the, the capacity or the throughput of, uh, of the system. Um, before that, I studied at TUE, uh, first a bachelor in industrial engineering, and after that, a master in manufacturing systems engineering, uh, where I, in, in the study, I learned to create uh, mathematical models uh, to optimize business problems uh, related to maintenance, but also related to production and uh, uh, inventory management. Um, and as part of my master's, I wrote a, a master's thesis at Lely in Maastricht, and that's of course the topic of today's uh, webinar. Um, so, oh. Yeah, so this is uh, the content of uh, my presentation today. Uh, so first I will give a short introduction about Lely and the problem they faced. Uh, after that I will uh, 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 elaborate on how I uh, 
tackled this problem uh, literature I've, uh, I've found and the optimization model that I've created based on this uh, the study. Uh, we have also uh, used the optimization model uh, in a case study at Lely. So I will uh, present the results from the case study and uh, I will present what uh, can be learned uh, for different companies uh, and how it's applicable to uh, their situations uh, as well. So a short introduction about Lely for uh, those who don't know Lely yet. So Lely is uh, uh, based in Maasluis. They are a developer uh, and a manufacturer of farming automation solutions. Uh, their goal is to make uh, life for farmers uh, easier by uh, giving them uh, Robotic solutions to their uh, yeah for their day-to-day -day operation. So what you see in the uh, uh, the uh, right corner is uh, Lely's astronaut, which is the their famous uh, milking robot where ca cows can go uh, being milked whenever they like. Uh, or on the le bottom left is the Lely Vector, which is a, a automatic feed uh, distributor. Uh, and on the top right. It's uh, the Lely Discovery Collector, which is a, a vacuum cleaner for uh, barn, uh, barn floors. To give you some uh, examples of the products that Lely produces. Uh, the problem that is the, the uh, uh, why, why the thesis has been done at Lely uh, is that uh, availability of uh, systems for, the, for farmers is uh, more and more important. Uh, these farmers rely uh, heavily on the, these Lely systems for their day-to-day -day operations. Uh, and when uh, these systems are unavailable, this can uh, lead potentially lead to uh, even health problems for the, for the cows, like uh, other uh, problems when the cows are not being milked on time, or hoof uh, infections when the barn floor is, uh, is dirty. Um, so availability is key, uh, key for Lely as well. Uh, preventive maintenance can be uh, can be uh, can help improve the availability of systems by replacing components before they uh, before they fail. Uh, and as a result, Lely has moved in recent years from a reactive to a more preventive service-oriented maintenance strategy. Um, maintenance schedules are still based on experience and gut feeling of uh, engineers and the technical service support department, and they are not based on uh, explicitly defined rules or uh, frameworks. Uh, as a result, Lady does not know if the current maintenance schedules are optimal, uh, and they, uh, because they are not based on explicitly defined rules, it's also difficult to replicate uh, uh, the creation of a maintenance concept, and it could be that uh, a different team uh, creates a different maintenance concept. Um, yeah, so they are not uh, based on a theoretical uh, framework. Um, when Lily introduces new systems to the market, they would like to offer uh, an optimal maintenance concept uh, right from the start. But for new uh, systems, uh, this is even more difficult because new systems often face a large amount of uncertainty because the failure behavior, the exact failure behavior of the system is not known uh, yet. This uh, results in the, the main uh, research question for the, for the thesis, which is how to create an optimal preventive maintenance concept for new uh, systems. Uh, to start with, uh, 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 I've started with the literature review, which revealed that the development of a maintenance concept uh, consists uh, of six steps. Uh, the first step in developing a maintenance concept began to uh, identify the maintenance objects. What do we really want to achieve with the, with the maintenance concept, preventive maintenance concept? And the second step is then to conduct a technical analysis of the system failure behavior. Uh, so how does our system fail? And um, uh, the Third step is then how can we prevent the system from failing by selecting maintenance uh, policies, uh, component maintenance policies or system maintenance policies. And the fourth step is to optimize the, the policy parameters. So uh, when should uh, maintenance be triggered? 
The fifth step is uh, the implementations, so an evaluation, so making the, the, the theoretical model uh, practical by creating maintenance schedules and putting it uh, into practice. Whereas the sixth step is then uh, a feedback to uh, update the maintenance concept when uh, new information uh, becomes uh, available. This was really uh, a short uh, uh, clarification of these uh, steps, but we will go to, uh, into more detail in the rest of the presentation. So the four, uh, first four steps of, these, uh, of the creation of a maintenance co uh, concept was uh, covered in the, in the thesis. So we'll talk about that uh, now. So first, uh, we should know uh, what do we want to achieve with the, with the maintenance concept, the preventive maintenance concept. Um, so for Lely, like I said in the introduction, uh, uh, availability of the systems is very important uh, for, the, for the farmers for their day-to-day -day operation. So Lely would like to have a preventive maintenance concept that uh, guarantees 100% uh, availability. Uh, with no unscheduled breakdowns and a limited number of service visits, uh, scheduled service visits per year. Um, and the second objective is to do this, uh, to realize this maxima, uh, maximal availability uh, against uh, economical feasible costs. So they also would, would like to minimize the maintenance costs. Um, and then the third objective of Lely is to uh, minimize the operational impact. Uh, deterioration of a, of a system in use is uh, inevitable. Um, and Lely would like to minimize the effect of the deterioration uh, of the system um, on, both, uh, yeah, on both the system and also on the uh, on, uh, Minimize the effect on the quantity, quantity and quality of uh, the output of the system. But then the, the second step is to perform a technical analysis, which I have done for, uh, for the case study for Lely as well. So the technical analysis, uh, with the technical analysis, we're trying to identify how the system is failing, uh, which behavior are we trying to prevent with the maintenance schedule. So how is our system failing? How are the components expected to, to fail? We can best uh, illustrate this with the example of a, of a car. So the, the tires of a car uh, usually fail uh, because uh, of the, 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 the friction with the, the road, um, which make them wear and uh, the profile on the tires is lost. Uh, and eventually they have to get changed. Uh, tires of the car can also, of course, be, uh, can fail uh, due to punctures, um, but this is less uh, uh, frequently, uh, I hope at least, uh, than, than the wear of the, of the, of the tires due to, uh, due to the road. Uh, the timing belt of the car uh, also wears uh, during the normal operation. Uh, and uh, uh, due to this wear, it can snap, uh, which can result in uh, severe damage of, uh, of the engine. Uh, the windshield of car uh, usually lasts the entire uh, lifetime of the car. It's not expected to, to fail uh, due to wear, um, but uh, occasionally, uh, for example, when, uh, when a rock on the road, a small rock uh, bounces, then uh, we can get a, a crack in the windshield. And uh, yeah, then the windshield should be replaced, of course, because it's not uh, uh, giving the full strength of the, of the windshield anymore. So after we've done the technical analysis, we should, uh, based on the technical analysis, select uh, maintenance policies. So how are we trying to uh, prevent the failure or at least uh, reduce the consequences of the failure? Um, and for this, uh, for, for selecting these maintenance policies, I've created the, the decision uh, tree um, to assign each component to a, to a maintenance policy. Um, so the first uh, question of the decision tree is, uh, can we monitor the condition, the components? 
example, we can uh, measure the profile depth of the tires of the car, uh, and we can uh, make, uh, determine whether or not to replace the tires preventively based on this uh, profile depth. Um, so then we uh, uh, we would use uh, condition-based maintenance for the for the tires. Um, other examples for condition-based maintenance might be vibration analysis or uh, heat uh, measurements. Um, what is important with condition-based maintenance is that there is also uh, uh, enough time between the first signs of, uh, of failure, uh, the first signs of wear, and the actual failure, because it, this is a really short period of time, a couple of hours, and we don't have uh, uh, the opportunity to perform uh, preventive maintenance uh, uh, in that case. Uh, unless we can, of course, uh, monitor uh, the condition uh, continuously. So if we cannot monitor the condition of the, the component, um, then we should ask the question, uh, does the component, is, uh, is it likely to fail after a certain, uh, certain time or a certain usage? Uh, which is the case with uh, the timing belt of the, of the engine. In that case, we would uh, use uh, age-based or user-based maintenance. And for the timing belt of the car, we usually replace it after five to six years or after one, 100,000 uh, kilometers, because uh, failure is uh, likely to happen uh, after that. And uh, with, this, uh, with these thresholds, we can uh, uh, replace the the timing belt before it, uh, before it fills. Uh, if the uh, answer to that question is no, uh, then we should ask uh, if uh, the failure has a severe consequences. If the failure has uh, severe consequences, because if it does have a severe consequences, then we should uh, 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 then redesign of the component is, uh, is required. Um, because if the, the failure of the system uh, of the component has uh, severe consequences on, for example, uh, safety of the operator or of the user uh, or on the environment, then we should, uh, uh, we should prevent this uh, and we should re redesign the component to make uh, failure uh, less likely or at least uh, make the system fail in a safe manner. And then uh, the last question of the, uh, the next to last question uh, of the decision tree is if uh, the consequences of the failure is uh, acceptable. Um, for example, for the, for the, the windshield, uh, the, uh, the windshield, when it breaks uh, due to, uh, uh, yeah, with a small crack like this one in the, in the picture, um, then uh, this is not uh, so severe that the car can uh, cannot drive any further. Uh, you should, of course, go to the car shop uh, as soon as possible, but you can drive the car to the to the shop yourself. Um, so uh, we are not trying; uh, we're not replacing the the windshield uh, preventively in the, in that case. And we can use a failure-based maintenance uh, policy, which means that we're just replacing the windshield after it has. Uh, has broken. Uh, so if uh, all the questions result in a, a no answer, then a redesign is uh, required and we should uh, uh, come up with some different solutions uh, to, uh, to mitigate uh, the failure. So once we have selected the uh, maintenance policies for, uh, for all these components, um, we're trying to, uh, we're going to optimize uh, the threshold. So when to trigger maintenance. Um, usually these models uh, are single objective. That means that they only minimize uh, the cost or uh, only minimize uh, the downtime. But uh, we have found that it's uh, quite difficult to translate downtime into cost, uh, which is what the uh, which is what is usually done in such models. Um, because how are you gonna translate customer satisfaction into into a cost factor? 
for even animal health, what is uh, the, the health of a cow uh, worth to us? Uh, that's difficult to, to express. Uh, or a product and company image, uh, how are you going to uh, translate that into a cost factor? So that's usually uh, quite difficult. And these uh, can be uh, conflicting. Uh, for example, if uh, one component uh, it would be optimal to replace it uh, for the downtime uh, after four months, uh, but it would be optimal to replace it after six months uh, for a cost perspective. So how are you going to uh, resolve that uh, conflict? So the model that I've developed is, uh, is a combination of two existing models uh, that I've found. These are uh, both from, uh, from Zoom. Uh, one is a, a cost optimization and the other is a downtime optimization model. And I've combined them to consider cost and downtime at the same time. Um, in the model, uh, there are scheduled down, which are uh, shared, um, uh, which are uh, moments at a fixed uh, interval that allow for a shared preventive maintenance actions on several components at the, at the same time. There are also unscheduled downs, and these are used for corrective maintenance, failure-based maintenance for, uh, uh, for components that fill between, uh, in between those uh, scheduled uh, uh, preventive maintenance actions. And the unscheduled downs in, in this uh, version of the model are only used for corrective maintenance on a single component. We are not considering the unscheduled down as an opportunity to perform uh, preventive maintenance, since we would like to uh, get the system up and running as soon as, uh, as possible. So what input is, uh, is needed for this, uh, for this model? Um, there's some input needed for the, for the setup of a, of a preventive maintenance uh, action on, a, on system level. Uh, this can be divided in downtime uh, factors and uh, cost factors. So the downtime factor is uh, once we uh, perform preventive maintenance, we should create a, a safe working environment and the, the system will be down in a, uh, during this time. Uh, also, we are, try, we are performing uh, several routine inspections uh, while the system is, uh, is down. Um, and after the maintenance is uh, performed, uh, we are uh, performing some tests or calibrations before putting back uh, the system into service. And from a cost perspective, um, the, the setup for preventive maintenance is, uh, is a driving cost. We have to drive to the, to the customer, to the, to the system uh, before we can execute the, the maintenance. And there's also some labor costs uh, during the the downtime of the, of the routine inspections. Um, and these uh, downtime and these costs, they can be uh, shared among several components once we perform the preventive maintenance uh, at these scheduled downs. Uh, so when we perform the preventive maintenance at the same, uh, same time. Um, so then uh, the input on, a, on, a, on downtime on the component level, uh, so for preventive maintenance, this is the, the, the system will be down uh, during the time that we replace the component, so the replacement time of the component. And for uh, corrective maintenance, uh, the system is down from the, from the moment of failure until we fix it. Um, so once the system is down, there might be some time uh, and uh, some time needed when, uh, when the service call is, uh, is, is getting too late, uh, but uh, depending on the situation, um, there might not be a dedicated person, dedicated service engineer uh, to immediately react to those service call. And they might need to finish up some other work before they can uh, react to, the, to this uh, service call. So the system will be down uh, during this time. Uh, also, during the driving to the customer, the system is, uh, the system is down. Uh, and uh, once the service engineer uh, uh, arrives at location, um, they have to troubleshoot, they have to find the problem. And sometimes this is, of course, evident what the problem is, but sometimes it might be a little bit more difficult to figure out what is causing uh, the problem. Um, 
And then uh, once the problem is found, uh, there's some replacement time of the, of the component. And for corrective maintenance, it can also be that uh, other components also have to be replaced due to collect, uh, collateral damage. For example, with the, with the timing belt of the car, uh, once that one fills, uh, we have to replace it, but we most likely have to replace a lot of components within the engine of the, of the car. So uh, this also takes, uh, uh, this is also uh, time that the system is, uh, is down. Uh, then some component costs. Uh, so for prevent and maintenance, this is the spare part cost, the, the labor cost of the technician while he performs the replacement. Uh, also some production loss can be taken into account uh, while the system is uh, down due to prevent maintenance. And for corrective maintenance, this is the, the same cost as preventive maintenance, uh, plus uh, extra driving cost because we cannot do some route optimizations, which we uh, might be able to do uh, for the scheduled preventive maintenance uh, visits. Um, if we need uh, an emergency shipment of, prevent of uh, spare parts, then also uh, these costs are, uh, have to be taken into account. Uh, and like I said, with collateral damage, we have to replace uh, some more components. So uh, these components can also be uh, uh, taken into account in the, in the model. Then uh, for the model, uh, we also need a lifetime distribution of the components, um, which is uh, for new systems, this is the most difficult part uh, of the process. Uh, so we need a lifetime distribution like you see over here. Uh, so this lifetime distribution describes when the, the, when the component is expected to fill. Uh, so with this red uh, line, the component is expected to fill in a quite short period of time uh, before one year. But there might also be a lot of variation where the component uh, fills after a couple of years and some components fill, uh, of course, earlier than others. So in order to de uh, determine such a lifetime distribution, uh, we have to pull all available information that's, uh, that's there. Uh, so this can be historical failure data uh, once uh, the system is, uh, is, yeah, is in use in the field. Um, if the, uh, for, uh, we can also look at different systems where similar components are uh, used uh, so, and then we can translate this into, into the, the new context. Or we can look at the uh, supplier recommendations. They usually give a recommendation, but this can be uh, uh, in a different context of both, of course. Uh, there can also be some test and validation phase data. This is usually quite expensive, but uh, can, can be very, uh, very useful. Um, or there are any engineering uh, reliability books written on uh, several components these days, uh, for example, SEALs. Uh, so we can get some uh, some information from those uh, those books, and maybe a very important source of information is the estimates of experts uh, at our company, uh, who can translate the other factors uh, and put the put it into a context of uh, of the new system. So, uh, with optimization model, we have. Um, we have done a case study at Daily for a fairly recent, uh, in, recently introduced uh, system. So it's a system of uh, approximately 20 components. Uh, these are the results of the, the case study. So what we've seen here is uh, uh, the average cost per year on, on this axis and the average downtime per year on, uh, in hours per year on, uh, on this axis. Uh, and in this figure, each plus uh, denotes a possible uh, maintenance concept that Lely can offer to their uh, customers. It's uh, the result of the, uh, of the model. Um, the different colors represent the maintenance interval that we use. So we can uh, use, a, we, in the case study, we have used a, a three month, four month, six month, eight month, and nine month maintenance interval. Um, uh, yeah, that represents the, the colors. Um, and uh, what we see in, in this picture is that the model tries to balance the, the frequency of preventive maintenance with the extra uh, risk of uh, corrective maintenance. 
So, uh, for example, if we perform maintenance very often with a three month interval, then we're replacing components uh, quite often, which results in, uh, in a higher cost, uh, of course. Um, but it also results in a, a higher downtime because we have to take the system out of uh, operation to perform the, the maintenance. But if we use a nine month interval, we also have a higher cost and a higher downtime because uh, there's more risk of corrective maintenance and corrective maintenance results in higher cost and in higher downtime because of the uh, uh, un, uh, unforeseen uh, moment, of course, of the corrective maintenance. And since we are uh, minimizing both of the active, both the downtime and the cost, we are looking for solutions in the lower left corner. And the figure shows that the six month interval has both the downtime optimal solution, but also the cost optimal solution. Uh, so the six month interval uh, is preferred uh, from, for this case study. Um, but there are uh, several optimal solutions. For example, if we compare this solution with a solution over here, then this solution has a lower cost, uh, but a higher downtime. And uh, that is uh, the case for all these solutions on these black lines. And they are called uh, Pareto optimal, uh, optimal solutions, which means that we cannot improve one objective without worsening the other objective. And it is then up to Lely to decide which uh, maintenance concept they are uh, offering to their customers. So they could decide uh, to, to offer one concept, but they can also decide to offer two or three maintenance concepts and let, uh, to better fit the needs of, uh, of the customers and let uh, the customer decide uh, which, uh, which one they prefer. So the applicability for, for other companies of this, uh, of this thesis. Uh, so the decision tree can help them identify a suitable maintenance policy for, for, for the components. Uh, so uh, should they do a uh, condition-based maintenance or age-based maintenance or even failure-based maintenance or redesign? Um, the model is also suitable for uh, systems with a large number of components. Uh, so we have done a case study for 20 components with the model due to the decomposed uh, solution uh, method that can be extended to uh, more than 100 components. Uh, the model can also be extended with other single component models. Uh, that means that uh, uh, if uh, other components are uh, uh, need a different model, a more complicated model, for example, uh, then they can be included in the model as well, as long as they have the, the, the parameter, the variable for the, for the uh, preventive maintenance uh, interval. And the model can help identify and uh, quantify these uh, maybe conflicting objectives uh, of, the, of the maintenance uh, concept. Uh, and as a result, uh, the companies can, uh, can uh, differentiate the maintenance concept. They can uh, offer several maintenance concepts uh, to the customers depending on, uh, on their need. So to summarize uh, the, the thesis and the, the steps that I've taken. So first, uh, to, to create a maintenance concept, preventive maintenance concept, you should derive the maintenance objectives, what we're trying to achieve with the maintenance concept. And then the second step is to, to figure out how the system is actually, actually failing before we can uh, prevent it. Um, based on the technical analysis, you would uh, select the maintenance policies per component. So how are we going to prevent it? And then the fourth step is to optimize uh, the maintenance policy is threshold, so uh, the triggers of maintenance, when should we execute the maintenance? And then um, once uh, the results of the, of the model are there, uh, you should select the, the maintenance concept depending on, uh, on the trade-off between uh, cost and downtime, of course. So that's uh, the presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, then I would uh, be happy to, uh, to answer them. Right now, um, Joop, there are no specific questions from the audience. Uh, one question from my side, but that's a very, very general question. You, uh, as a result of the thesis prize, you received thousand euros. Did you have good spending on that, uh, uh, with these euros? 
<laughs> yeah, I took a, I took a holiday uh, <laughs> in uh, November when it was still allowed. Uh... Okay, good. <laughs> okay, nice to hear. Um, uh, maybe one question from my side right now. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times that there is a need for redesign in a couple of occasions. Yes. Um, did you see that really happening? At uh, Lely? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, because that's uh, that's because of the case study where, that we performed. We had a system that was already uh, available in the market. Uh, and that's also why we had some uh, some failure data, a small sample failure data. Um, but Lely has taken some uh, some redesign steps, of course, when in the first couple of years uh, of the system in the, in the field, uh, some components uh, are failing before uh, much much uh, more before uh, when Lely was expecting the components to fail. So also to uh, reduce the costs uh, of the of the, of the system, of course. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's switch to uh, to Oscar. um then you should stop sharing yeah i'm trying to figure out how to do that <laughs> uh you is it possible to uh have one more question yes uh, my name is uh, gert schrijver so i'm uh, uh, I've been working for uh, nearly 40 years as an officer in, uh, in the army and uh, recently I started uh, to uh, a new career as a, 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 a teacher at the Defense University and um, I'm lecturing at Defense Asset Management. Um, in relation to uh, what you uh, presented, uh, my question is the following. Um, we see often that um, use uh, of a, a system, a weapon system in our case at, at, uh, at defense, um, uh, and uh, the, the, the maintenance uh, um, we have to do on a weapon system also the, the uh, maintenance um, uh, way uh, we are doing uh, our maintenance concept is uh, is related to that. Uh, did you also look at uh, the use of uh, the systems at Lely uh, uh, in relation to uh, what? the outcome is on the optimization of your uh, maintenance concept? Well, since we are talking about uh, a fairly new system, the, the, there was not uh, yet uh, information about the usage of a system. Mm -hmm. uh, but Lely uh, is more and more collecting data on, uh, on usage. Uh, and I think Oscar will tell you something about how they're trying to, to use this kind of factor usage, for example, uh in the maintenance concept as well um so i have not looked at uh, the usage per se uh, more at uh, the age of a component the lifetime of a component um but this is of course a factor that uh, that's relevant for a maintenance concept and that uh, lady would like to uh, include in the in the next uh, stages if i may okay. say thanks okay oscar Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, there will be some uh, some overlap in the presentation because you told something about Lady, and that's what I will do uh, myself as well. Um, first of all, my name is Oscar Moors, working now almost seven years at Lely as a, the last three years as a senior project uh, manager, uh, running several projects, and one of them is uh, what we call the project Data Driven Maintenance, and the presentation is called Innovative Maintenance. It's a journey. Um, a few figures about Lely. Uh, Lely, uh, uh, one of the biggest robotic uh, suppliers of uh, the Netherlands, uh, working for, uh, mainly in the dairy industry, uh, over 600 million euros turnover uh, and huge investment in R&D year on year. I go a little bit quick through these slides. Um, you can read it on our website, of course. Um, and uh, we are active worldwide with a focus on uh, Western Europe and North America, but also uh, in 
let's say, other ends of the world, like Asia, Latin America, and Oceania. We do the maintenance by, uh, let's say, 200 local and specialized so-called Lely Centers. And Lely Center is a sales and service organization that is uh, locally uh, speaking the, the language and the culture of the customers. Uh, the vision of Lely is to work in a sustainable, profitable, and enjoyable future in farming. Uh, and you can explain that in, in several ways. And uh, we, oh, I see there is a slide missing. Uh, and, and we explained that in a strategy uh, where we, uh, where we uh, take over all the repetitive work of the farmer by robotics um, and support the farmer in, uh, in, in the decisions he has to take. Um, why data-driven maintenance? Why we think that is important? Um, uh, first of all, we would like to have our machines to have 100% uptime. And uh, as explained by you already, um, that is important because of uh, animal health uh, and also uh, to be convenient for our customers. We can do that uh, via, for example, predictive maintenance, but also you can ensure uptime by, for example, 3D printing or uh, augmented reality support, uh, remote support, and these kinds of uh, offerings. We're now focusing on the predictive maintenance uh, part. And uh, more or less, this is the system as explained already by you. If you want to achieve 100% uptime, you can uh, improve your machine, eh? continuous development, uh, what is here in the middle, uh, or you can maintain the machine. And maintaining the machine, you can do preventive, via age-based maintenance or condition-based maintenance, or you can do it correctively and wait till the part breaks down. Uh, this is not the rocket science. Um, and uh, I think this was the, 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 um, uh, the main challenge of you uh, at the end is um, in his thesis uh, that we have two um, sometimes contradictory um, um, objectives. Uh, because we see downtime really as a separate objective versus cost. Uh, you can say, okay, if a milking robot is not working for one hour, that uh, that cost is uh, so many liter of milk, and uh, you can uh, calculate the turnover losses. But uh, at the end, the cow still has the milk, so the cow needs to be out of the, the milk needs to go out of the, the, that cow. So somewhere, it is not only about cost; uh, it is also about uh, what is the market standard. Uh, and, and are you doing better than the market standard or are you doing equal or less? Uh, what, uh, what about customer satisfaction, uh, employee satisfaction? Uh, and breakdowns is not so good for employee satisfaction. And uh, last but not least, animal health. And, and to bring all these elements in and translate this into cost, uh, I do not believe in that. And therefore, we go for this uh, multi-factor and multi-component uh, model. And this is already explained by you. Uh, and, and, and the step you took uh, for Lely was an important step. And it was, uh, let's say, the first step, eh? uh, because it's a step in the journey. And it is a step to develop a, a let's say, a, let's say a, a more well thought through uh, maintenance concept. Um, but a lot of steps are coming uh, afterwards. Um, and one of the steps here is that we are looking at predictive maintenance. Um, and I made two quotes. Uh, so um, when you look at predictive maintenance, or when you look at corrective maintenance and preventive maintenance, uh, um, in corrective maintenance, basically you make the best use of the components. Uh, you, you use the components till it's the end of the lifetime of that component. Uh, and you do not replace and you do not waste a part of the rest lifetime of that component. But the, uh, uh, the downside is that the setup costs for corrective maintenance are relatively high. When you compare that with preventive maintenance, it's very efficient uh, for the setup cost for your maintenance, but uh, the use of, uh, of your part is limited, is, is less than in corrective maintenance. And by implementing uh, predictive maintenance, what or there's also a, a, a way of condition-based maintenance, but, but then on continuous monitoring, uh, we try to combine more or less both. Uh, so you try to optimize uh, the use of the component life, uh, lifetime uh, without increasing too much the cost and downtime uh, uh, due to corrective maintenance. 
And this is a, uh, um, a model that is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sh uh, shown more often. Huh? So this is the so-called PF curve. And P is the, 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 the moment that you can indicate that a, a component is starting to uh, um, uh, degradate. And, and the F is the moment of failure. And this time between the P and the F is, 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 is crucial. So when you do a condition-based maintenance purely on inspections, probably you can indicate vibrations or you can indicate uh, uh, power uh, usage. Um, so you are in this area to indicate that a component is not functioning 100% and you need to replace. Uh, with monitoring, you can indicate much further and probably you can, can replace it, the, the part, let's say, uh, more, more related to days and, and in, uh, in uh, inspection-based maintenance, it is more to, to months. And that's the, let's say, the benefit of predictive maintenance. And that's the way we are going to. Um, and last step we want to take, if we have that in place, is to go for more a dynamic maintenance concept, where we uh, think of uh, dynamic in terms of uh, timing uh, and dynamic in terms of what content of the maintenance action. And uh, the content of the maintenance action uh, might be uh, what parts to replace, what parts to inspect, uh, what is the threshold uh, you are using. Um, and that makes it really challenging um, and that's uh, the dynamic influencers are, for example, the customer preference. Uh, you've already explained this model, uh, and then you can have a customer said, okay, I want to pay more for less downtime, or I want to pay less for, and I, and I accept a little bit more downtime. And so you can offer um, uh, different models depending on the preference of the customer. And that preference of the customer depends on how he uses the machine. It also depends on the service conditions. Yeah? A service organization in Poland is, uh, I would say, cheaper than uh, the same service organization in Switzerland. Um, or the driving time in Sweden is much longer than the driving time in Friesland. Uh, and all these service conditions um, uh, influence or will influence the um, uh, the outcome of the of the model that this is created by you and the successors. Uh, the same for external circumstances like humidity or temperature, um, and it also and humidity and temperature influences the lifetime of the components, but also influences, for example, the uh, the condition of the crops uh, and and, the, and what you harvest and that is in the machine. And last but not least, the usage of the machine. Is it, is it driving long uh, tracks or short tracks and those kind of things? So all these elements we want or we are trying to include, uh, uh, finally, and, and resulting in a dynamic uh, maintenance concept with the dynamic thresholds, dynamic timing, and dynamic activities. And uh, finally, that makes us uh, farming innovators. Thanks, Oscar. I think that was a clear story. Uh, no specific questions right now. Uh, maybe it's wise to ask Claudia uh, first to uh, to to get her pitch in. And if there are then questions left, uh, we can do that at the end. Thanks. Okay. Um, right. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Okay. Right. So, um, uh, um, Ben already introduced uh, me, but uh, I'll introduce myself again quickly. So, my name is Claudia Fekarotti, and I'm assistant professor at um, Eindhoven University of Technology since almost three years now. And I work in the area of reliability engineering and uh, maintenance and modeling and optimization. So with, the, with this uh, very short uh, 10 minutes presentation, what I would like to do really is not to give um, really a technical presentation, but I would like to give an overview of how uh, UPS work uh, actually fit into a wider picture that um, Lely has envisioned and how this wider picture then fit within the scientific context of maintenance optimization of um, complex systems. Um, 
so the uh, ultimate vision um, of Lely um, uh, is for Lely to have a machine with a maintenance policy, which is customer specific and which is optimized on cost, uh, downtime and um, output performances and a policy which fully implement predictive and proactive uh, maintenance whenever possible. Um, such a machine, uh, for such a machine, critical components are continuously monitored uh, by means of sensors and the use of sensors and the Internet of Things is um, uh, complemented by the implementation of either artificial intelligence techniques or data-driven methods for predicting uh, failures of components before they actually occur uh, in such a way to uh, enable uh, proactive maintenance. Um, the maintenance policy for a machine should be uh, optimized based on a trade-off of multiple objectives. And so far we have identified three main objectives with, uh, which Oscar also mentioned before, maintenance cost, system downtime and output performances. And this trade-off is actually different depending on um, the customer. As Oscar pointed out, for some, cu some customer are willing to pay more in order to have um, higher availability or the other way, the other way around. Finally, the maintenance policy for the for the machine, for the system um, that, that, that we envision is um, dynamic. So it dynamically adapts to the context and by context we mean the customer as well as the environment and to the machine requirement and the availability of data also in relation to uh, the uh, current life phase of the machine, given that we want to consider the entire uh, life of the machine from design until possibly end of life. So from a research perspective, um, this ultimate vision is translated into uh, the following deliverable, which we are trying to um, achieve by implementing a long-term research involving PhDs and, and master students who uh, look at complementary and, and different aspects of the, of the problem. So this uh, ultimate deliverable uh, for our research is to develop a decision support system for initiating maintenance actions and also their clustering for the machine considered as a whole and during the entire life of the machine itself in a dynamic context with dynamic influencers, as Oscar already uh, mentioned before. So developing these decision support systems entails, first of all, um, developing optimal maintenance policies for the machine during the different life phase, from design to early exploitation phase until end of life. Uh, the uh, policies must be optimized um, against multiple criteria. And those criteria should be um, considered simultaneously rather than individually. And uh, the system should also leverage on multi-source dynamic information, which come from the monitoring of the system itself and are used to first update predictions on system behaviors and based on these updating also the maintenance decisions and therefore the maintenance policies in order to make them more um, uh, better tailored to the, to the actual current situation of the machine. Uh, when we talk about maintenance policy, we mainly, um, uh, the, the, the elements of the maintenance policy for the machine mainly entails the time of visits, so we can have periodic or aperiodic um, schedules for the, um, for, the, um, for the visit of the maintenance engineer. Um, but also the policies for the individual components. So for instance, the maintenance threshold triggering Actions for components. Um, and also the rules for grouping maintenance activities. So rather than sending the engineer to um, replace one component, we might group activities and uh, take advantage of the economy of scale. Um, so to frame the problem into the scientific, the wider scientific context, we first need to identify the type of system that we're dealing with in a more generic terms as well as the type of maintenance problem that we want to address. So um, we can generalize the type of systems that Lely uh, deals with um, as um, complex engineering systems, which consist of multiple heterogeneous components. Uh, and this entails the fact that the maintenance policy for the system should include a mix 
of maintenance policies for the individual components, not policies of the same type, but of different types. And this makes the, um, the analysis and the optimization more difficult. The components degrade over time. So we have, um, so they don't just work or fail, but the condition evolves over time, which means from a modeling perspective, we cannot only use lifetime distributions, but also we need to use, um, uh, uh, for instance, um, stochastic process to describe the degradation processes of components. Uh, the components are um, connected to form a complex system structure with several dependencies from the economic dependencies, which is the, the easier to model, to structural performance and stochastic dependencies, which actually make the optimization problem more difficult. Uh, in addition to these, failure and degradation processes are affected by uh, both epistemic and aleatory uncertainty, which means epistemic uncertainty is the one due to a lack of data, um, which, um, uh, which is, uh, for example, uh, very often the case during the initial phase uh, of life of the machine, the design phase in the early exploitation phase. And then there is the aleatory uncertainty, which is the due to the intrinsic stochasticity of the failure and degradation processes. And from a modeling perspective, this is translated into parameter uncertainty for our um, failure and degradation processes. So we need models that tackle this uncertainty. And finally, when we take maintenance decisions, um, we need to uh, take into consideration multiple requirements. So the multiple criteria that we've um, talked um, about before, possi possibly uh, simultaneously. As for the maintenance problem that we want to tackle, um, really um, the maintenance optimization problem in our case focused on improving and optimizing maintenance policies. So we develop, analyze, and solve mathematical models aimed at optimizing maintenance policies. But so we've been talking about maintenance policy, but what is a maintenance policy? So um, we can identify um, classes of maintenance policies. So in general, we have the basic one, which is the failure-based maintenance policy, basically corrective maintenance. Then we have age, uh, time, and usage-based maintenance policies. And the most interesting nowadays is condition-based maintenance. Optimizing a policy structure means finding the optimal policy parameters, for example, thresholds triggering maintenance for a component. Policies might be static or dynamic. If we consider a static policy, this means that the policy only depends on the current state of the system and not on the time at which a decision is taken. If we consider dynamic policy, this means that um, the time at which we take a decision, or better, the time which is left until the end of life of the machine actually counts in determining our decisions. And this is very often the case in real life. So we want to actually go for dynamic policies rather than static. And then we went, when we develop those policies, we end up satisfying different criteria. Nowadays, the opportunities given by uh, digital technologies with the use of sensors and the Internet of Things um, really determine the possibility to leverage on condition monitoring uh, and leverage on multi-source information to diagnose and predict faults and failures um, of the systems. And in this context, um, condition-based maintenance plays a fundamental role, and it is of the utmost importance from a scientific perspective to um, uh, develop tools, mathematical modeling tools and computational tools to take the best advantage from the available data uh, and to bring condition-based maintenance and maintenance optimization in general a step forward, uh, thus enabling smart maintenance of systems. Uh, where we combine the physical system, the information, and the decision process. Um, as for condition-based maintenance, uh, we really can distinguish two main types. Diagnostic, which is the more traditional one, uh, where uh, policy structures are, ba um, are basically more, very often control limit policies and decisions are based only on current conditions. 
And then we have prognostic condition-based maintenance, which is the most interesting in our case for predictive maintenance, because decisions are based on prediction on the future behavior of the system and the remaining useful life. Now, current approaches to uh, condition-based maintenance optimization in the literature normally focus on uh, mostly single unit systems. So in this case, we do have both diagnostic and prognostic condition-based maintenance. But when we go to uh, multi-unit systems, those policies cannot be directly applied to multi-unit systems. So we need to develop more complex models. And so far in the literature, Mainly multi, for multi-unit systems, we see uh, models that develop stationary policies, mostly diagnostic, uh, and are optimized against um, over an infinite planning horizon against cost. Uh, the contributions considering heterogeneous systems are limited, and also consideration of parameters uncertainty is limited, and the use of data-driven approach within the optimization model is limited. So there are many contributions considering data-driven approaches for condition-based maintenance, but they're focused on the predictive models, not on the decision models. So uh, to conclude, Really, what is our focus with respect to the gaps in the literature in order to achieve the ultimate deliverable for, um, uh, that, that we've mentioned at the beginning of this presentation is to develop models for uh, systems consisting of many, many heterogeneous components. And this implies developing multi-level optimization approaches where we jointly optimize maintenance policies at component level and at system level. Uh, we want to develop dynamic policies rather than static policies, also because in this way we can take into account a number of factors like short-term information, technological improvement of components, and um, there the time left until the end of the machine life really matters. And in order to do that, we need to develop sequential decision. Uh, we need to model the, the decision process as a sequential decision process over a finite planning horizon, which is not too usual uh, in the literature. Um, we want to develop those dynamic policies uh, by simultaneously uh, um, optimizing multiple criteria. And what we want to do is to and um, have an a posteriori specification of preferences in order to obtain efficient solutions from a, in a Pareto sense. So this means that we provide a portfolio of possible solutions and then Lely and the customers will choose the solution that best fit their, um, their needs. And, uh, and finally, we intend to handle parameter uncertainty uh, mostly by means of a uh, Bayesian um, approaches. So uh, I didn't have much time, so I only wanted to really give the, the bigger picture of um, uh, what we are trying to do together with Lely and how this fits in the wider scheme uh, of, of maintenance optimizations in the scientific uh, literature. So if there are any questions, I will stop sharing the screen. Thank you, Claudia. I'll, I'll try to be as quick as possible. Uh, it, it, you, you did it in the Italian manner, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Talking fast. <laughs> <laughs> very good. OK, thank you very much for the clear uh, picture. Um, I think uh, we, ha we have achieved quite uh, uh, some good objectives in this uh, webinar. First of all, we have seen uh, the thesis of, of you, and then the, let's say, the, uh, the innovation approach that, uh, that Lely is taking uh, in a wider approach in, than the uh, model that uh, you was presenting. Uh, and then, of course, Claudia with her scientific approach in terms of what is it that we have in the focus, and we are working with companies like Lely in order to get that established. I think that was a very good uh, overview. Given that we are now uh, a little bit over time already, I would suggest that if there are still questions left, that um, we can contact uh, afterwards. Uh, we can make sure that, he, that either one of you can get in contact with the, with the appropriate uh, people. Um, I would like to thank uh, Joop and uh, Oscar and Claudia 
lastly, I would like to make reference to our uh, Surface Leadership Summit on November 23rd. That's all about technology this year. Uh, it's about technology that energizes service change. And that is particular, let's say, uh, also in, in this case, very important uh, if you want to see uh, the maintenance strategy, thus the service logistics as a service chain optimization uh, included. Thanks a lot, guys, and, uh, and see you all next time and hope to see you in person November 23rd in, uh, at, the, at the summit.